know you true, all you crazy people out there in the metaverse and beyond. Oh, wow, you got it. We're out for a bimble. It's a lovely day. Just me and the Budsy. Hey, Budsy. Hey, hey. Oh, no, kid. So, God, I tell you, it's been a busy few weeks. And uh, apologies for not having a video out there last week. I just, you know what, didn't know where I was coming or going. I'm telling you. And it's just been absolutely non-stop. Work-wise, which is good, I'm still like a swan. I'm on the surface, two of both feet underneath, but it's all good, I'm absolutely loving it. So I was, uh, I was away last weekend at the Green Wally, up there in uh, the lovely Scotland, where well, it was lovely for one day, that was the setup day. But that was the day I got to ride the mighty live wire. Oh my God! That bike is fast. It takes off like a rocket ship. I tell you, and I actually quite like it, the way it handles, the way it rides, how comfortable it is. I've got to say, it just confirms that, uh, you know what? I'm not the best friend I thought I was. A two-wheel addict, as long as I hate the engine. Anything with pedals is a no-no from me. The rest of the time, I've been working hard on Norton doing the Norton Road Shows. So if you've said any uh, availability at different dealerships to book a test ride, that's me. I'm out there uh, managing the event and uh, I've also been the lead rider on a, quite a few of them now, which I've got to say I do like the fact that they still get to ride. And uh, yeah, they've been uh, really good as well and a good learning curve for me on, you know, learning to manage people, learning to manage events. So that's been good. And, uh, well, apart from that, we haven't actually done a lot together, have we, Budsy? He comes to work with me every now and again, when he wants to. I say to him in the morning, you come in, and he either jumps upon the sofa, wagging his tail, or he shoots back in his bed, and all I can see is a little set of eyes going, you've got no, mate, it's far too early. It's far too early for all that nonsense. So, that's nice in itself when he does want to come that he can. You know, it's quite nice, makes a change, having him with me at work. Likes to guard my desk, nobody's allowed near my desk. Oh, definitely not, and it buds, definitely not. What's going on with this camera, buds? I'm not sure what's going on with that camera. Still not the best place for it, look. Ah. But you know what, I just wanted to try it, but uh, I'm not impressed. Still saving for the, uh, the Insta360. Still got a long way to go, but uh, yes, I am definitely going to get one of those cameras one day. What are you doing? Come on, taxi driver, pull your finger out your ass. Come on, kid. Okay, now taxi drivers. They're not bad as Uber drivers. Talking about Uber drivers. Oh, so I flew to Scotland, and uh, I've got to say, it was. Uh, one of the most traumatic experiences of my life so far. Well, it was traumatic anyway. So it all started with an Uber driver. I've never used Uber before because I've always thought, you know what, anybody that's tried to kill me is normally an Uber driver. But I needed to get one from uh, Norton HQ in Solihull to Birmingham Airport. So I thought, you know what, it's just quick and easy to get a bloody Uber. What's going on, kid? And uh, so yeah, so I set the app up and ordered myself one and then they got the Uber driver from hell. Oh my god, he was the spawn of Satan I'm sure. And then he dropped me half a mile away uh, because he didn't have a card to get into the taxi drop off. And I'm like, well why take the bloody job in the first place? I won't drop it at the door. So, that ended up taking me about 20 bloody minutes to walk down. So that was the start of it. Then they opened the gate late get your baggage in. So I did that because I got my riding kit with me. I then had to go to oversized baggage. So I did that. Then I sent myself to security. This is where it all got traumatic. So I haven't flown since I had my accident. I just haven't been on airplane. So as soon as I hit security, I set every bloody alarm off in the place. Oh! Next minute I got six big meatheads all standing around me like I'm some sort of Al-Qaeda terrorist. I tell ya, 
they've been to a bathroom all my life. So then it became a bloody, they scanned me, they patted me down, they virtually made me take my pants off. And then they put me in an x-ray machine, where I just glowed red. <laughs> just glowed red I did. And eventually, 35 minutes later, they let me go through. And I know they don't have to apologise, but you know what? It was very embarrassing, it really was. Come on taxi driver, move over. Why are you blocking the road? You ain't getting past it. Look at it, look. What is it with you? <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. Do you want to look in your bloody mirror, mate? I'll tell you. Unbelievable. Some people, they're just unbelievable. So! Then I was late for my gate, and I was bloody miles away. Oh, I thought I was going to have to crawl there in the end, because my lungs were about to pop, my legs were hanging off, and I got there in the nick of time, they were just about to shut the gate. And I was the last one on the plane. Oh. And that was that. But quite a quick flight in itself. So when I got the other end, I was, uh, I was telling the lovely lady that was uh, going to give me my rental car, so I'd hired a Ford Focus, because that was the cheapest thing to hire. And uh, I was telling about my uh, telling about my traumatic experience at the airport, and she laughed. Once she stopped crying, and the tears were rolling down her face, she says, would you like an automatic? And I says, you know what? If you're going to upgrade me for free, I bloody will. So she gave me all my stuff. When I got out there, I'd only got a bloody top of the range Mercedes. Oh, I'll show you now, look. For the price of a Ford Focus. So, to be fair, the day got better, but it soon got worse. Because then I arrived at the hotel for Mel. Oh, I tell ya. It looked bloody lovely on the pictures. The reviews, they all lied. I'm telling ya. I, uh, I ended up with a room where uh, pretty much I thought somebody had died in it. Upstairs is the third floor, is the whole, is the whole, that whole floor is the bar and the restaurant. And I was the only one up there, the only place the internet works. So I went up there to do a bit of work late afternoon when I got there. I gave myself a pint, because I needed a pint. And uh, pretty much, it was like summer out the shining. And it had that same sort of eerie feel about it. And uh, I'm telling you, it was the hotel from home. My room smelt like, well, uh, dead people. Uh, to the point I couldn't sleep in it the second night. I had to get them to move me, upgrade me to a, a double, which they agreed to do because I kicked off. Um, yeah, well, it was better. It was 10% less smelly. Um, oh, yeah. And that was me in that hotel for... Uh, Three bloody nights, but hey oh, it just was what it was. So all in all, it was a good weekend. I was glad to get home, see my little budsy. Oh hey bud, could you miss me, didn't you, kid? I was glad to see him, and uh, like I say, there is no place like home. So it's the middle of the week. I've had a couple of days off just because I've worked the last 14 straight, and. Uh, yeah, back tomorrow, and then uh, got a bit to do in the office tomorrow, and then it's all back to doing the Norton Roadshow. So I'm all booked up for the uh, Alma Ed Festival, end of September. Whoop, whoop. Can't wait for that. It'll be nice to catch up with everybody. And uh, meet people that I haven't met, but I've obviously spoke to. I've seen them, you know, the name's popping up. So yeah, that'll be a good, uh, be a good experience. It's a pity it's only one night's camping. I would have preferred to. Maybe I'll get an hotel the night before. And uh, fancy a night in an hotel, buds, then a night in a tent. How do you fancy that, kid? Rather than trekking up there on the Saturday to then try and get set up and have a whole artillery of shit to do. So I might do that yet. 
You might just get myself or get us and the missus a travel lodge. Hey kid. Oh. Gotta love a monkey. <laughs> you gotta love a monkey. Do you love my monkey? So yeah, we've been uh, been celebrating, haven't we, buds? We're celebrating, uh, you would have seen anybody that follows us on Facebook or Instagram, if you're not on those, go over there and have a look. Give us a bit of support on them two, uh, them two social formats, that would be lovely. But, uh, yeah, put up that we were celebrating our 800 subscribers, which I think is bloody amazing. And then the next day we went down to 799, so we've got to celebrate it all over again. And then we're back up to 801. <laughs> we're back down to 798. And we've been doing that pretty much all month. And at the moment, we've been up and down, up and down, up and down. And we're uh, we're pretty much, we're back to 798. So, um, but never mind. Like I say, I appreciate every single one of you that uh, have shown us some love and give us your sub. So anybody that's still here and watching this, crazy old man and his dog just out for a bit of a yab then uh, definitely hit that subscribe button show us some love and give us a sub so on that note we're out of here who are we buddy so that's a bye from me a bye from you bud where are you a bye from you okay kid and uh, we'll catch you on the next one stay safe out there Live your best life.